What's happening? I'm Bill Farrell. I'm a skateboard collector and I'm here in beautiful Wyoming, Delaware with amazing skate artist Bobby Brown. He's going to show us some boards he's done, art he's worked on over the years. He's done everything from socks to records to air fresheners. Bobby's a badass and a half and you're about to see why. This is the first skateboard I did for ATM um, Click, which was SOP Distribution for John Fowlhay, um, Edward Devera. Um, Actually, this was before all the, I think, kind of computer-like stuff, so it was hand-drawn, full-size, and a guy named Dan Severson colored it because at that time I wasn't, um, I wasn't ready to color yet, you know what I mean? It was just like, I could draw a lot, but computer-wise I was still lagging a little bit. It was 1997, I think. Um, but they, I mean, that's, it's the most important board to me in my collection because it's the first one I ever drew, and it kind of just like, I thought, probably the only one I'll ever draw and then eventually it just ended up being more and more and more and more and we're still going to this day. This is um, for Assault Skateboards out of California. It's for Team Rider Ace Pelka. Um, I draw a lot of apes and skulls and stuff and everybody's like, well let's do an ape or whatever and then I'm happy because I like playing the apes and I like King Kong and all that stuff since I was little so when I get to do an ape or a skull on a board I'm really happy. Um, Color wise it's good, I drew it, this is a digital drawing, unlike the first one that was all um, traditionally drawn. I've, I've recently moved to just digital drawing now rather than um, traditional drawing for boards. It's just faster and easier and the computer files go quicker for everybody. Um, Assault, they have an army of boards out and great skaters. Um, I, probably some of the best boards out there truthfully, made by uh, Watson Laminates. This is um, a deck from our friend Lou Metal out of Jersey. Um, I, th I think this deck may have been done before, but we recreated it um, for his company, Metal. I think this was 90 or wow, 2000, 2000 mid something. Um, Fred's an East Coast ripper. Everybody knows who he is. He just destroys everything in Jersey and everywhere he goes. Um, I like to grab it personally. I was going to set it up one time and ride it, and then Lou told me not to because it's hard to find now. So I left it out. <laughs> this was the most recent one I did for Fred Gall and Metal. Um, a guest board of sorts. Um, one of the things that, that always stood out to me about metal skateboards is Lou always found ways to get me to draw stuff that wasn't my style or it just enhanced my style. And no Sharpies and computer stuff was ever done for metal. It was all traditionally hand drawn, like full size big on paper with brush and ink and colored on the computer. But um, I think the metal stuff is some of my strongest stuff. This is one you probably won't find and won't see. It was for ATM2 at the time, I think 97, um, back when Birdhouse was big and everything. They did something called Strictly for Cash, ATM Click. Um, really different style for me to draw in. And I remember I drew these really small so they could scan them in really easy. Um, as you can imagine that because you're goofing on somebody else's company they didn't last long and they got pulled but I got a, I got this one and I think I have another one somewhere else over there. Like, oh man John's got to go to a board meeting with Tony and all this shit you know what I mean and I think even if I ever meet Tony Hawk I'm not going to say nothing to him about it <laughs> <laughs> nope <laughs> I don't even think I told Cab that story this one is this one was really crazy because I would have never thought in a million years that I would be able to do a faction cover or even be friends with such a great legend as Steve Cab. Um, it was a live recording from CBGB back in 85. Um, it's uh, put out by Not Like You Records. Um, Mike puts out a lot of cool stuff, still on vinyl. Um, I don't know, man. This one's just kind of heavy. And it's, and it's really sentimental to me, this one. I really am proud of this, this like project. I'm proud of everything I do, but being a kid growing up and hearing Skate and Destroy and stuff in the beginning of a Bone Brigade video show, and then you're finally, you know, you're kind of connected with it because you've done something to, that you remember growing up with, and that's like sentimental. So that's the awesome part of this. And I've seen him play once, and I'm going to see him play again, and I didn't think I'd ever see him play. So that's pretty cool. What else have you done with Steve? Um, well, we worked on some prints together because we were getting him um, 
color and computer coordinated with some of the stuff. Like, I would always show him stuff, and he'd say, how did you do that? And I'd say, hey, I'm just using this digital tablet. And um, he's like, well, let me try it. You know, so we, when I was out there visiting one time, he did some stuff on it, and um, he liked the way it looked and the way it printed at a printer he uses in San Diego. And um, eventually he bought one, and we set it up last time we were out there, and I know now he takes it on trips and stuff and just kind of like doodles around and does some really cool stuff with it. He's a natural. Like, he excels at everything he does. Honestly, it's really crazy. Painting, digital art, or skateboarding, motocross, and everything else. Great guy. Great guy. Last time I went to California, I was just off the plane for a half hour. And I was like, I'm going to go to the room, just chill out, get my stuff together, hang out. And he's like, hey, I'm here. Where are you at? And I'm like, okay, I'll be right there. You know, and I'm trying to set this thing up, and my brain is just totally jet lagged. And But well, we, we, we pulled it off. You know what I mean? We got it set up, and he was, he was flying in no time. And he won the contest that year. Oh shit! So it was even better. Either. The combi. Yep. Uh, last year. Last year's. Yeah, yeah. last year. Cap yep. won the combi. Yep. Fuck yeah. Ninety-seven probably. Okay. This one is an Arsenal skateboard for SOP distribution. You know, John Fowley, he's other company. Um, it's a Mike Rafter. Um, it's modeled after the Nom comic book by Michael Golden. Back then, everybody was like doing comic book kind of stuff and whatnot, which I liked. Um, the colors, they're good because these boards are all hand silk screened. I actually visited SOP one time, I think in 98, and they were hand screening. I don't know if it was this one or another one, but it was kind of cool to see it all going down. Um, but yeah, ATM, I think that's probably the most boards I've done probably for the one company. This is a lifeblood deck for um, Bryce Knight's company, which I met at the Dew Tour. Um, I'm not sure which one it was. I don't remember. I think it was like one of the first ones in Ocean City, and I saw Bryce taking pictures, and I wasn't sure it was him, and I said, hey, are you Bryce Knights? And he's like, yeah. I said, well, I draw stuff sometimes, and I gave him some stickers, and eventually we got, he, you know, contacted me, and we, we did some boards together, and, you know, I was pretty stoked on it. Um, he had a cool concept with the ape and the, and the bunny suit, and we did a little series. Um, so, we keep it like that, and, it's good. I don't know if anybody has these. I didn't see a lot of them, but they are out there somewhere. I had, I had a small stint in the uh, early 2000s. It was with um, Tom Yeto, um, and I did some... Uh, I did not create the Yuck Fu character. That's Todd Swanks. He just asked me to, to draw it and some different things, you know what I mean? Um, so I did that, and eventually they had, they had made some decks. Um, they even did one that was kind of an Iron Maiden style. Um, on the back, I mean that one there. It's got like the Yuck Fu guy with his hand, like Number of the Beast. Another one was like an Edward Corey style, really black and white. Um, I don't know. I was going, we were going through Target one day through the toy aisle with the kids, and I saw it, and I was like, you know, double take. I was like, I didn't even know about that, you know. But you know, whatever. It's it's cool to have a tech deck, you know. I have a couple with my graphics on it. This is the only one I know of where it's at right now. Um, the other one's put away somewhere. So many years, so many stuff, you just shuffle it away and it gets lost in the, lost in the sauce, you know. But yeah, tech deck, it's cool. You don't have any of those boards? These? No, I, I had, the ones I had, I had to buy. <laughs> this is a new line of socks through Merge Socks. Uh, Keith Meek and Cindy got up with me and we're going to... We're working on some stuff. Everybody's got socks on. Um, Cab, Jimbo, and a mess of other people. Uh, Kirby has some. I mean, I can't even name all the names because they have so many socks. And they're just beautiful. I mean, it's not all this stuff either. It's like surf-inspired. It's all Santa Cruz-inspired stuff. So it's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, they'll be hitting, they'll be dropping maybe next month. I don't know. These are the sample ones that I got to check out. This little S1, I, I sketched that up one time um, for the work I do with S1 helmets with Chris Terrence. He's a cool guy, great company helmets. Busted my head many times, but didn't bust it because I was wearing one of these. Um, they're rad too. I got some new stuff coming out from then. Um, stay tuned for that. Yeah, look at the sick little cut on there, man. I mean, he's a little guy, but look at the little cut, man. It's so rad. I saw it. I was like, oh, that's crazy. Cool, I couldn't hide this one. It's a little small. <clears throat> This is the Wee Man board. Wee Man 
just from jackass and all that crazy chicanery and, and just madness. Um, he's a really cool guy. I, I, I talked to him about, and I met him, and I hung out with him once at ProTech, and we talked, you know, via text and everything. He's a good guy. Um, 100% skateboarder, full on raging all the time. This is for 410 Skateboard Company out of Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, my good friend Matt Martin. We met and uh, ended up doing some stuff. First board was all skulls, so I was happy, he was happy. Um, and then it turned into a whole bunch of other things. I think I've done like four or five boards for him so far. Um, and they're still coming out. I mean, and he just did this one in a negative, I think. So it looks pretty sick. But yeah, I mean, Baltimore 410, they're going strong all the time, dude. Dropping it like it's hot. This one was our good friend, Jerry, Skate Master Tate, who passed away a couple years ago. Um, it's It was heartbreaking to lose him. I lost him around a, a week before I think my dad passed away. So it was a double whammy. I wanted to go see Jerry before he passed and I couldn't because I couldn't leave my dad. Um, I, he, I think he contacted me on Instagram one time about something and, uh, and he just, man, he was so full of love and smiles, man. And, uh, we ended up connecting and talking and, uh, I, I told him I was coming out. I think I was going out for Cab's birthday, his 50th, I think at Bands. And he was like, yeah, we'll, we'll hook up or whatever. And every trip after that, I think it was like two or three after that while he was still with us, he would pick me up from the airport. It's the first face I saw every time I got off the plane at uh, John Wayne Airport. And we would go somewhere, um, hang out, you know, we would go eat or something. And he introduced me to Randy of Flood Control, which, you know, bloomed another great friendship through skateboarding and everything. Um, I don't know, he was a character. Um, skate TV, everybody remembers that. His albums, I mean, the guy was just... Yeah, he was skateboarding. I mean, if, if you had an artery, skateboarding was a heart, and all the veins and arteries were going to it, he was a definite one. He just, he, he just, he gave out the love, and, and anybody that talks about him goes, oh man, I miss him, I love him, you know what I mean? He's a great guy. I didn't get enough time with him, but I'm, I'm very honored for the time I did get with him. And I think anybody that's met him feels the same way. This is, this board, is, uh, I think it was a special that Randy had made up. Um, but it was an honor for me to do it. You know, it really was. I wish I hadn't, I wish I would have met him earlier in his career and we could have just jammed out some more, you know, but short, life is short and you got to do what you got to do and be good to people, man. There's a lot of good people out there and when they're gone, they're gone. So rest in peace, Jerry. They all love you. I skate regularly. I think I skate three times a week at Epworth in the bowl. I skate with my good friends. I skate with my new friends. I skate with anybody. If somebody from out of town's coming into town, they're like, Message me and say, hey, I'm going to be there, let's skate. And I'm like, cool, I just skated with a guy named Neil yesterday from Virginia. Um, this is a Sea Rat deck. Uh, Dominic Mabel in San Diego makes some custom. I think this is 10 and a half by 32 maybe. They're, you know, it's just a good big solid board, man. It's what I like. I I don't like skinny boards, you know. I like, I like big boards, big boy toys, you know. So that's how I get down. And I like to grind. When did you start skating? Oh, uh, jeez. I think I was 12, 13 maybe. I saw, like a lot of people, I saw Back to the Future. And I saw like the Marty McFly thing. And it looked kind of cool. He was on a fat board. And um, nobody really, ran, like, you didn't, I mean, that was so long ago, you didn't really know your neighborhood yet too much. I mean, you kind of knew it. But then you would cross over to the other side of the tracks. And I met a lot of my good friends there, Dave and Danny and everybody. And uh, they actually had real skateboards. I had this one from Boscov's that was like a skull or something. I hadn't even graduated to the Nash Executioner yet. Um, which I was so proud when I got a Nash Executioner. I had a green one, the XR2 trucks and wheels and the grip tape that looks like it was just dripped like salt shakered on it's glue or something. And man, I, I think I rode that board until the wheels were like ice cream cones. I mean, they were just beat, man. And then I, I mean, back then you would like switch boards. And um, I remember the hardware, <laughs> we didn't even know where to get hardware. So like, there was a hardware store down the street somewhere and we had gone there and I got this hardware and it was too long. So it ended up sticking up like that high. 
you know what I mean? We had to bend it off and all that stuff. You know, it was it was a messed up time back then, man. I mean, my mom got me skateboard trucks one time, and I remember she got me one 215 and one something else. And I was just riding these Mitch Mash trucks, man. People made fun of me. They told me I had coat hangers on my board and stuff because my wheels stuck out so far. You know, it was crazy. But my I think my very first board that had an actual name was like a Vision Old Ghost. It was a, a Wrigley. Um, I have the reissue somewhere around here. I'm not sure where it's at. Um, my friend Dave had the hippie stick. Another guy had a street ghost. But then it was all broke up because everybody's like, oh, I, I'm Santa Cruz riding. I got I got a Roscoff, ride a Schmidt sticks. Back then, you know, everybody rode everything. I mean, it was just a, a total love of skateboarding. And it was, I don't know, everybody was doing something different. I mean, you got your street boards now, they all look alike. And back then, they had shape. Which the shape is coming back. I mean, the pump point's taken over again, I think. Um, but they had shape. The graphics kind of meant something, and that's what I liked about it. You know what I mean? From just being able to connect with something. Because you know, if you saw a skateboard and you saw like a skull or something on it, you're like, oh man, that's that's pretty tight. I'm gonna get that. You know. But back then we protected everything. We had rails. We had copers. We had nose guards, tailbones. Um, lappers aka the bird and all that stuff and we were only riding in the street and on curves we didn't even need that stuff that's the funny part <laughs> bearings and mb those were the only bearings i remember riding back then um wheels i think what rat bones a lot of rat bones and some um, santa cruz bullets i think and then we got into the phase where we were riding the oj uh street styles that nodists started riding because um, everybody liked those. Um, but wheels were softer back then and bigger. You know what I mean? It was a total, when, when things changed and it went from big boards, big wheels, to skinny boards and small wheels, it was a total dehydration. It was like beef jerky in a cooker. It was just, it was, it was crazy. And you just kind of had to step back a little bit and salvage your parts. You know, but we're living in good times now, guys. If you're over 30 and 40 and you're not skateboarding, you're missing out. You got to go back. There's still good stuff out there. And there's still there's still bowls of skate, ramps to ride.